Alex Ziegler is suing his former landlord, Randy Simpson, for motorcycle damages and a wrongful eviction. Court come to order. Have a seat, please. Case number 1180, Ziegler versus Simpson. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Ziegler, this is what I put together from your complaint. You were looking for a place to live. You had no place to live. Yes. Mr. Simpson has a house, and in that house, he rents rooms. He has a lot of tenants. It's a house that you own, is that correct? Yes. And you've owned it for how long, sir? 30 years. Okay. Now, he agreed to rent you a space. He didn't have a bedroom but rented you a space, at least temporarily, at the beginning of July? Yes, July 1st. And you lived there for approximately four weeks. I got kicked out on August 6th. So five weeks. Yes. You claim two things, that he, A, illegally evicted you, so you want a lot of money for that, and your second cause of action is that you drive a motorcycle and that Mr. Simpson allowed one of the other tenants, someone whose name is Todd, that would be you, to drive his truck, and Todd knocked over your bike that was parked behind the truck. Correct. Causing some damage to the bike. Now, you lived in the house for five weeks, and would you stand up? Your first name is Todd. What's your last name? I'm Moberly. Mr. Moberly, you acknowledge that you knocked over the Mm -hmm. motorcycle. The defense to that that Mr. Simpson is raising is that Mr. Ziegler had parked his motorcycle behind the truck, but parked it on the sidewalk instead of parking it someplace else. And I assume you have photographs of that, Mr. Simpson. I yeah, assume you have photographs of, of that. Driveway from did you, well. so I'm going to ask Mr. Ziegler, what time of the day did this happen on August 6th? This happened late at night, probably around 8.30, 9 o'clock. Where had you been? Um, so No, I, that's a question. Uh, that doesn't, that's not a so. Where had you been I prior to- I went to the to, store for five minutes and came back. Just a second. You took your motorcycle. Where had your motorcycle been parked? So the driveway would... Where had your motorcycle been parked before you left? Right behind the Tahoe. Then you moved it. I never moved the motorcycle, no. You said this incident happened at 8.30. I want you to try to concentrate, Mr. Ziegler. I said, where were you before this incident happened at 8.30? You said, I went to the store for five minutes. Before you went to the store, where was the motorcycle parked? Behind the Tahoe, on the driveway. In the driveway. And then when you came back from the store, you parked in the same place. Um, I actually drove my car to the store, not my bike. And I left my bike behind the Tahoe. Where was your car parked? On the side of the street since the driveway was completely full. So your car was parked in the street in a legal parking space? Yes. You left the bike where it was. You took the car from a legal parking space because the driveway was full. You went to the store for five minutes, 8.30, then you came back. Did you repark your car? No, I, I parked it still on the side of the street where I had it before, where I always parked it. Okay. And you went to the store to get what? To get a Gatorade. When you came home from getting the Gatorade, you just went to the store to get one Gatorade. Yes, because I was just on a, a, a... You were thirsty. When you came home, what did you see? I saw my bike on the ground and Todd trying to pick it up. Is that what happened? Yeah. Did you pick the bike up? I tried to. It's a little heavy. I'm so... sorry. Did you pick the bike up? Yes. What did you do with it? Um, I moved it um, away from the back, and I put it kind of in the garage, in a little space in the garage. How did you get it there? I picked the bike up myself and brought it into the garage. I didn't drive it or anything. Just a second. You picked it up and you walked it into the garage. Yes. Just by your own curiosity, why would you park your bike behind a Tahoe if there was space in the garage? Because I went to the store real quick, and I left my... What does that have to do with the bike? You took your car to the store. You said your bike had been parked behind the Tahoe because the driveway was full. Yeah. But you just said that you picked up the bike and you walked it into a space in the garage. My question to you is, if there was a space in the garage, why would you park it behind the Tahoe? Because I was going to go for another bike ride again later in the day. Later on in the day, it was 8.30 at night when we were going to go for another bike ride. Um, well, because the, the cars were super close together and there's not, it's, it's kind of hard to maneuver it around those spaces. After you moved the bike, Mr. Ziegler, from behind the Tahoe into a space in the garage, did you call the police? Yes, I did. Why? Um, to get evidence that it happened and everything. And because that he told me that later on he first admitted that he would be No, no, just a second. Just a second. So you had a conversation with Todd. He 
couldn't pick the bike up. He says it was too heavy. You picked it up and you took it into the space. Did you have a conversation with him? Yes. Tell me about the conversation that you had at 8.30 at night after you came home from getting a Gatorade. So first he was telling me that, you know, he's responsible for it. No, no. You said to him, what happened? You know, so far I'm not following your whole story. Yes. You do understand that. Yes. Okay. Alex Ziegler claims his former landlord, Randy Simpson, owes for motorcycle damages and the cost of a wrongful eviction. So you say to him what happened. He said, I didn't see your bike behind the Tahoe because it was dark, right? Is that what he said? Yes. I assume that that's what he said. Mm -hmm. And you said to him, I'm, I'm still not figuring out why the police were called. Okay, because then later on he said- Later you know, on when? Um, about 20 minutes after this happened, he said, I will not pay for the bike in- Just a second. So now you're inside the house. You've had your Gatorade. Your bike is in the garage. Mm -hmm. Your car is parked on the street. You have another conversation with him in the house. Tell me what you were in the living room. What, where were you? So I was actually outside looking at the bike, looking at the damages, assessing how much the damages would be. And um, I told him how much it would be. Well, what did you tell him it would be? You... I said it would be roughly, a rough estimate would be around $1,000. Okay, so you said it cost about $1,000 to fix it. And what did he say? He said, well, you shouldn't have parked the bike behind there, so I don't owe you anything. And okay. yeah, that's it. And but you previously, I let you him shouldn't, know. Just a second. Okay. So he said, you shouldn't have parked the bike back there. I don't owe you anything. Mm -hmm. okay, well, that's a lawsuit. Yes. And you call the police. Mm -hmm. Can I see the police report that you filed? Yes. I have a video, too, of the whole thing going down as well, if you want to see some clips on my phone. Tell me what they're of. Okay, they're of him admitting to hitting the bike. He admitted he hit the yes, bike. Yes, and it's him admitting that I told him previously not to go anywhere and I'd be back in five minutes that the, my bike was behind the Tahoe. You have that on your phone? Yes. That I'd like to Definitely. see. And I'd like to see the police report again. So it's these two, this one and this one. That's the first one. And then the police report there. Took place in the driveway. That's what it says for Mark. Took place in the driveway. I'd like to see. How much? Um, I just, he told me, uh, he asked me if I was going anywhere. At the time, I didn't really think of anything had a year ago. Then he left. He said he was going to be back in two minutes. I forgot. He told me his car, his bike was parked in the back of mine. Got it. Okay. So the problem, Mr. Simpson, is it's your car. You got the insurance. Yes. He... Looks like he was high as a kite mm -hmm. on this video. Mm -hmm. And if you allowed him access to that car, you're responsible for this damage. Probably was. You were? Well, mm -hmm. he probably was, and you are. So you have an estimate to fix the bike? Yes, I do. I'd like to see it. Have you had it fixed? Yes, it got done with the shop a couple days ago. Well, this is the estimate. How much was it? That's the final. I have a text message that shows it. Just tell me what the final invoice it was. It was the 1134. Now your case is for unlawful eviction. Yes. After this incident, the police were called, and I want you to tell me your version of what happened with Mr. Simpson. So after the police were called, I went inside, you know, inside the house, going towards my room, where his room's right across the hall from mine. And so he said, Alec, come step in my room. And so I did. And he said, in my 30 years of living here, I've never had someone call the police. And he said, get out of my house and yelled at me. And I did not feel safe. And that's when I called my buddy Jaden and let him know the incident and asked if I could spend the night at his house. After the incident, he's going towards his room. You call him into your room. This is the third time Mr. Ziegler's called the police to my house. In the five weeks he's living there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my roommates were ready to kill him. So. Okay. So I have some written testimony. No, 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 no. Yeah. I don't read written testimony from people yeah, who are Yeah, I understand. Here. Okay. Did you tell him to leave? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you went to stay with a friend? Yes. You moved in on the first. You were paying a couple of hundred dollars, but then you moved into a room for $400 a month. Yes. Correct? On what day in July did you start to pay $400 a month? So, well, it was $200, the agreement, the verbal agreement with Randy, but... At the end, I actually asked for my money back because I just paid him for the beginning month of August. And he, he, he was telling me, he, well, he should be charging 400 instead of 200 but our agreement was $200. Did he give you any money back for August? He did not. Did you pay August's rent? Yes. How much did you pay? $200. You moved from a loft area to a room. 
Yes. That's why he was increasing your rent to $400. Where are you living now, Mr. Zippy? Um, I'm living in Lehigh. I have my own place in an apartment. And how much was your rent there? Uh, it was 700 So it was much more money. Yes. Stayed by yourself? Yes. Mr. Simpson, you have a lot of people living in your house. Yes. Clearly, you are responsible for Mr. Ziegler's damaged his motorcycle because it's your car and you allowed somebody who lives with you to drive that car who acknowledges that he forgot that he was told, don't move the truck because my motorcycle is there. He acknowledges it on tape. He acknowledges it, Mr. Simpson, on tape. And it's your car. So you're responsible for the damage. And I believe you're also responsible for his month's rent at this new place. You're living in another place now that you like better? Yes. Okay. I'm giving you the $700 that you paid in rent for the month because he should have given you 30 days notice. Four, three, eight, 1834. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're done. Thank you. Court is adjourned. I was in a Tahoe and it, the motorcycle sits lower than the back window of Tahoe. It's crazy. It's nuts. I honestly didn't see any parked on the sidewalk. I'm glad I am out of there. You know, the more cases we do like this, the more I appreciate your wisdom to always live alone if you can, because problems arise all the time. Yeah, sometimes it's lonely, but a lot less drama. Mm -hmm. 20-year-old Jasmine Muhammad Bishop and her mother, Tracy Muhammad, are suing Jasmine's ex-boyfriend, Angel Castaneda, for Jasmine's belongings and attorney fees. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 1047, Muhammad Bishop Muhammad versus Castaneda. Thank you. You're welcome. He was your boyfriend. Yes, ma'am. This is your mother. Yes. Two of you have a child together. Yes. How old is that child? He's currently 21 months. You lived together for a while. Yes. yes. In his apartment. Yes. How long did you live together in his apartment? For about 19 days. Prior to that, where did you live? Um, in my mother's home. With him? Yes. And the baby? Yes. This is what the case is about. Then I'll get into the facts that support your allegations. You had a fight. Yes. You left the house. You say to cool off. That fight ended in you ultimately separating and you going back to your mother's house. Yes. According to you. When you left, the baby remained with him. Yes. How old was the baby at that time? He was seven months. And in what month was that and year? Uh, June of 2020. Well, we're now a year later, and it looks to me as if you're about to have another baby. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And who's the father of that baby? Um, Anthony. Do you live with him? Uh, no. Who do you live with? I still reside in my mother's home. Do you see Anthony? Yes. How often? Often, but on maybe a weekly basis, not every day. Does he have other children? No. Do you work? Yes, ma'am. For whom? Children's Choice. I have a dental assistant. How do you divide custody between you and the defendant of your son? We have a custody order by, order by the court, um, joint custody, and his main residency is with me. Is that what the order says? Correct. The order says that the physical custody is with his mom, even though it was with me in the beginning. How often do you see him? I get him Wednesday, 10 to 5, and then Saturday through Monday. He leaves Monday, 8 a.m. I get him early Saturday at 10. So I get them about three, four times a week, try to balance it out as much as I can. Do you exercise that time? Yes. Is that correct? No, he does not get him as he's supposed to. When was this order made? It was made in August of 2020. And when doesn't he take him? Whenever his schedule approves so, or it's up to him. You mean because his work schedule? Um, he says sometimes his work schedule or he has other things that he has to do. What I'm asking you is, does he see him from Saturday to Monday? Yes. All right, so he sees him from Saturday through Monday. Monday, he brings him home mm-hmm. to well, you. We meet at a, um, a location. We have an agreeable location at Starbucks Public. When you were living together with the defendant, were you working? Yes, ma'am. And there were things that were purchased for the baby. Was he working? Yes. Are you working at the same place, sir? Currently not at the moment. Uh, I got terminated after COVID, so... When you were living together, were you working? Yes. The termination happened until about August 2020. You're asking for the return of value of property, and the property that you talk about in this order are a stroller, a crib, a laptop, clothing, and electronics. So let's take that one piece at a time. Stroller. Let's hear about it. Okay. Um, well, with, regarding the property and the stroller, the stroller was never returned. It returned to whom? Me. Me and my mother. It was never but, returned to us. It was not kept. you and your mother. He has the child. Since you were never married, Mm -hmm. property belongs to the person who purchased it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who purchased the stroller? My mother. Is that correct? That's true. 
Okay. And when you purchased the stroller, you made a gift of it to whom? Jasmine. She wants the stroller back. I hear it. Great. I'm glad you agree with me. That's always important. A crib. Who purchased the crib? My father. He's not here. A laptop. Do you have her laptop? I do not. Tell me about the laptop. Um, the laptop is something that my mother owned, but I often used it a lot. I was also currently enrolled at college for a bit, so I used it for college courses. He says he doesn't have it. I don't know. He might have thrown it away. Did you have possession of her laptop? I did not. Honestly, when I seen that, I'm not too sure what she's talking about. More than half the things were already gone. The cops looked into my place, searched everything. They didn't find anything of her there. So of hers there. Sorry about that. And uh, they just took her. Are you telling me that the police took her laptop? No. They did a thorough search of my place to make sure if any of her... No, no, you can't there. tell me what the police did a thorough search of her place. She says that she left the laptop in your house. You would have had a fight, mm -hmm. which we'll get into in a minute. So... I don't believe I've seen a laptop. I can't recall. It's a lie for me. Okay. What electronics are you talking about? The laptop and the, um, I had an Xfinity router in my name. An Xfinity router? For internet. Did you buy that? I was paying the internet and for the router to be installed there because we had got the apartment together. And? And it was never returned, so I had to pay a fee for the router. And how much was that? About $230. Not about 200 Let me see the bill. Where's the router? Do you have it in your apartment? I do not. Well, you should have. 20-year-old Jasmine Mohammed Bishop and her mother, Teresa Mohammed, claim Jasmine's ex-boyfriend, Angel Castaneda, threw away Jasmine's property. They also claim Angel filed false charges against Jasmine. When you go home, you check for the router, okay? Sounds good. Now, did there come a time when any of your relatives, your mother, anybody else, come to the house and take any of your property that was in the house that the defendant gave them? Any personal property, any cosmetics, anything? He wouldn't let anyone in. Okay. I want you to describe the evening when the defendant left the house. Sounds good. So that evening, I came back that morning from my witness's house, and I was just talking to him, you know, about the whole week. It was just hell. The whole week, she was just telling me she didn't want my son. She didn't want me, want nothing to do with my son. Didn't love me, didn't love my son. So as soon as I came back to my place, she already had a knife in her hands, and I put my son on the ground, and I'm telling her, what are you doing? And I don't know where she's trying to come at me. Could you, could at you me look forward. at me? Yes. She's trying to lunge at me forward a little bit. No, then now you're looking down at the desk. I want you to look at me. See how I'm looking at you? So as I come in, she has a knife in her hands already. I don't know what she was trying to do to herself, doing to me. I just told her, like, look, you need to leave. My son is here. I worry about him. I'm trying to look after him. Just leave. Cool down, like you said earlier. Just need her to cool down. About four or five hours later... She now you're looking back. up again. Sorry about that. About four hours later, she comes back with her mom, with the cops. Cops come at my door, come in my house. They ask me what's going on. I tell them the situation. I didn't call them at first. They called first on me. They said that I was abducting my own child. So I had to show them the birth certificate to prove that I was a father. Once I proved that I was a father, a cop took full control of the situation, asked her what else happened, and then from there, they just took her. So you told them that she had taken out a knife? Correct. And you were, in fact, arrested? Yes, I was. Yeah. When you were arrested, were you interviewed by the police? The female officer that was present had taken my statement regarding, because my mother no, no, had no. called uh, them. Uh, yes. Just a second. I would like to see the report of the female officer, because that's part of this lawsuit. Do you have a police report with the narratives? Yes. May I see it, please? It's both of these. You were granted a temporary restraining order, is that right, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Was that temporary restraining order made final, ever? Yeah. The next court date was on July 22nd, 30 days after the restraining order was in place, and they extended it only because she didn't show up. Her lawyer showed up. They extended it? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, it's For not an answer. For another 30 days, so it was a two-month until she showed up to court to try to get joint for my son. The temporary restraining order, was there ever a hearing on the temporary restraining order? Yeah, it was on the, uh, the first hearing was on 722nd, and I, I showed up. Yes, was there a trial? You said she didn't show up. She didn't show up, or her lawyer did. Okay, where were you? Um, I was home. My well, lawyer showed up. 
Why didn't you go to court with your lawyer? Because I also want to um, file a restraining order against Angel. That's not what I want. <laughs> Don't speak. No, Don't okay. speak. So the reason that you didn't show up on the return date and sent your lawyer is because this incident occurred on July the 7th or just prior thereto. And the temporary order of protection was issued on July 7th. I assume between July 7th and July 22nd, you got an attorney. Yes. And I assume that you were advised not to appear in court on the adjourned date because between July 7th and July 22nd, which was when the case was next on in court, when you didn't appear, is that the right date? Yes, it was July 22nd. Yes. Something happened. Listen to me carefully. I want you to tell me what happened between July 7th and July 22nd with him. Um, nothing had. Nothing happened. Well, if nothing happened, then there was no reason for you not to go to court to respond to this order of protection because there was no new information except that you got a lawyer who advised you that strategically it would be a good idea if you filed for an order of protection. Because if you tell me nothing happened between the 7th and the 22nd, you tell me what you alleged because you filed an order of protection against him through your lawyer, and I want to see what you alleged in that order of protection that you filed against him. I want to see what you alleged. Um, I don't have the supporting documentation. I have a police report. The police report gives two different versions of what happened that day. The defendant says that you were very upset that day and agitated, and you actually had a knife in your hand. Whatever happened with that knife, I don't know. Clearly, you've calmed down enough to find another guy and to be having another baby, so that whatever was bothering you is not bothering you anymore. Now, when they finally reached you, you said, I never had a knife, and I never threatened him, and I never threatened the baby. So I have two different versions, which is why you have a hearing. But that's what was alleged in the police report. Now, do you have a police report that you made for any incident that happened between July 7th and July 22nd, when you were supposed to be back in court to answer the order of protection? No. No. What? If I may, I filed a domestic violence restraining order against Angel as well because there had been previous history. Well, you didn't file it before. You only filed it after he filed his. And there was no new information and you were living together. Well, because I wasn't sure of how he responded to the situation after the custody would... Listen, I understand exactly what happened because part of the lawsuit is your mother's lawsuit because she laid out $5,000 for a lawyer and you're suing him for filing a false restraining order. Jasmine Mahama Bishop has accused ex-boyfriend Angel Castaneda of throwing away her property and filing false charges against Jasmine. Now, you're suing him for filing a false restraining order. I don't know whether he did or not. Certainly the police were called and there are two different versions. I do know this, however, that between the 7th of July, when he got his temporary restraining order, and according to you, the 22nd of July, when you were due back in court, you didn't file a police report alleging any problem with him. Everything was quiet. You got a lawyer. Your lawyer told you to stay home, not come to court because you were going to file a restraining order against him as part of a wider custody dispute, which ultimately ended in an order of joint custody. Those are the bare facts. So, so far, he owes you $230 for a router, which I think he still has. However, sir, in one of the police reports, it suggests that you threw some of her stuff in a dumpster. Listen to me carefully. You know how fair I am? I'm the fairest person you know in your life. Don't look at the wall. Don't look at your friend, Whitney or Sarah. Look here. What did you throw in the dumpster? I didn't throw anything in the dumpster. I don't believe that. So I'm gonna ask you again. What did you throw in the dumpster? Did you throw any of her clothes in the dumpster? I believe her clothes were by the dumpster, but I didn't throw any of it away. So somebody placed her clothes near the dumpster? Correct. What did you place near the dumpster? I put all her stuff, all her shoes, electronics. All of her shoes. You know, women really like their shoes. And all of her electronics. What electronics did you put well, near the know, dumpster? What? It had to have been the, had have been the router with there, too. Because I, I can't, there's no use of the router for me. If you don't pay it that much, you know, it's out of service. From what I can recall, it was a lot of just like shoes, clothes, just bundles of clothes where I put them in bags and I just put them right there. 
so she can pick him up, you know? Do you recall on what date you did that? Now, your son was living with you at the time. Correct. It had happened the day it happened, the, the, the date of the ex incident. And what date was that? The 27th, or the 7th or the 22nd of that month, uh, June. 622. Correct. How much did you pay the lawyer to represent your daughter? $5,200. You're not getting that back. I don't know whether the allegations are true or not. As far as the order of protection is concerned, I can tell you that the one that your daughter filed had no basis because according to her, nothing happened, certainly between June, more clearly from July 7th when he got the protective order, mm -hmm. until the 22nd of July when she was due back in court and the lawyer told her not to appear. That's not actually how it occurred, I'm sorry. Well, that's what she says. She says nothing happened. No, nothing did And there happen. was no police report there was of anything that happened between July the 7th. But that's not why she didn't appear in court. Well, that's why she says she didn't appear in court. She, she did. said she didn't appear in court because she was going to file her own order of protection. Well, Would you advised. read that back? Would you read that back to me? She said, because I also wanted to file a restraining order against Angel. That's why she says she didn't appear in court. That's correct. Um, our attorney, we obtained at the time of July 22nd, had a trial already. So he went and, t and told Jasmine to stay that he appeared at the trial. Filed for Just a second, you can't tell me any of that because that's okay. all hearsay. That's all hearsay. Okay. What the attorney told you, that's all hearsay, nonsense. Okay. The reason your daughter didn't show up was because she said she wanted to file her own order of protection against Tim for things that happened in the past. That's what she said. Okay. That she can tell me. Okay, so I have to use a calculator here because I'm sure you don't have, what? I just want to clarify, that is what the attorney did say as well. Did but you understand what I said? I said, that's hearsay. What you answered me as to why you didn't appear in court is you said because I wanted to file an order of protection against him. That's what you said. Okay, your lawsuit is claiming, Sarah Rose, check my info on this, please. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to turn this thing on. All right, there it's on. The lawsuit is alleging $6,500. $74. And you paid the lawyer how much? Uh, $5,200. $5,200. Mm -hmm. Minus $5,200. That means that there were $1,300. $1,374. And, sir, listen to me carefully. According to what you newly remember, you did in fact stuff all of her stuff, including electronics, in trash bags and put them out near the dumpster on the day of this incident. You can't do that. She's not going to get her counsel fees, and she probably doesn't have receipts for all of this stuff, but it sounds reasonable. You threw away all of her shoes, that's $1,300. $1,374, judgment for the plaintiff, we're finished. Court is adjourned. It wasn't that she cheated or I cheated because she didn't want him, he don't know. As soon as she had birth, she did not want him. The allegations are completely false. I did not grab a knife. Well, she told me I couldn't see my son without her, and she wasn't trying to do the co-parent thing, so I mean. His way of getting to me was trying to Take me away from my son. I hope she could just learn to co-parent and take that same positive class, parents by choice class that I'm taking. If she could take that class, I would be happy. All that I hope for is just for us to be on neutral terms and do what's best for our son. You know, it's frustrating for me. You would think that people learn from historical mistakes. And it was always my experience in the family court that the people who ended up with the short end of the stick with other people's irresponsible behavior are children and very often Grandmothers. I mean, this young woman is clearly responsible. She works. She has a job. She will have shortly two children, both born out of wedlock with two different fathers, all within a two-year period. Doesn't live with either of the fathers. The defendant in this case, it looked like he needed a nap or a drug test. I'm not sure. Maybe both. And the one that gets holding the babies and holding the bag is her mother. And paying the bills. And paying the bills. Anyway, I feel sorry for those children. I hope she's a nice lady because they're going to need some direction. Annalisa Baseman is suing her ex-boyfriend, Michael Ash, and his wife, Deanna Robinson, for unpaid loans and the return of her property. Court, come to order. Be seated, everyone, please. Hello, Judge. Case 1085, Baseman versus Ash Robinson. Ms. Baseman, your last name is? Ash. Ash. Mr. Ash is a former boyfriend of yours. Correct. Ms. Robinson was his fiance, then his ex-fiance when he moved in with you, and is currently his current fiance. 
Um, we got married two days ago, so we're, we're well, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. I don't know what the cause of action that you have is against Ms. Robinson. Uh, because she put a stop to me contacting Mr. Ash to get my property back. Just a second. She had an order preventing you from contacting him or her? No, neither. She had written in text message that if I contact him or her family at all, she will take legal action. The case is dismissed against her. Okay. Have a seat. Thank you. I couldn't figure out what your cause of action against her was because you don't have one. Mr. Ash, you and your now wife were engaged and living together when? Uh, for eight years and all that. We were together. We got engaged. Then we had a falling apart uh, for roughly eight months. And all, I was um, even misplaced from my house because of Okay, it was your house? Yes. So your current wife had a restraining order against you. Yes, ma'am. And the restraining order put you out of your home. Yes. And while you were put out of your home, you reconnected with the plaintiff. Yes, ma'am. Who you had known in the past. Yes, ma'am. And asked her if you could move in. She did let you move in. You stayed for a while and then developed a romantic relationship with each other. You hired a lawyer in order to get back into your house. No, ma'am. How did I, you get back into your house? I had gotten legal advice of how to file the proper paperwork so I could represent myself. Who did you get the advice from? Um, Chris, um, sitting next to her. Plaintiff's witness? Correct. Did you get the advice from her because that's her profession? She is a paralegal of some sort? No, ma'am. Was the advice free? No. What did she charge you for it? For the first initial to get back in my house, $250. And in what month was that? November of last year. And then you had someone else file for a protective order against you? Yes, ma'am. And who was that? Uh, Ex-girlfriend times two before Miss Robinson. You are the unluckiest guy I know, Mr. Ash. Yes, ma'am. And did again you use the plaintiff's witness to help you with that situation? Yes, ma'am. And what was her fee for that? Uh, $1,200. And all of this transpired while you were living with the plaintiff? No, ma'am. The 250 happened while I was staying in Duluth, Minnesota, with, with the plane. The 1200 I was back in my house at that time. Were you back in your house and still connected to Ms. Baseman? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you were still together with her? Yes, ma'am. And where did you get the 1450 from? Did Ms. Baseman give you that money? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I want you to tell, because that's part of what she's suing you for. Yes, ma'am. Tell me the circumstances surrounding her giving you that money. She thought that me being legally bound by these people that I shouldn't have to go through this, that she was going to help me get through this with uh, paying for legal advice. And what were you doing at the time? Not working, ma'am. How are you supporting yourself? I am currently still unemployed. How are you supporting yourself? The basic system. Well, tell me exactly what that is. I'd like to know what the basic system is for it, you. I've, we've been here doing this for a couple of months. We've had so many stories about the basic system. <laughs> I want to know what your basic system is. I receive M from the state of Minnesota. What is that? Uh, parent and child. They give you so much cash, uh, food support, medical. I also receive child support for my son. Okay, so you have one child. When you lived with Miss Baseman, did you take your son with you? No, ma'am. Where did he stay? Uh, same town, across town with his aunt. Were you still getting money for him when he yes, was living with his aunt? Yes, ma'am. How much? 300 bucks a month. And how much were you getting personally for yourself? In child support, none. I don't receive any uh, not child support. I'm talking about any other. You're not supporting yourself on $300 a month, sir. No. So what other monies do you get from any uh, oh, source? Oh, MFIB. Well, tell me how much you get. Uh, MFIB varies from 150 maybe 250 depending on how much child support came in that month. 150 or 250 a what? A week, a month? A month. A month. When was the last time you were employed? Five years ago. What kind of work did you do five years ago? I was a courier driver. And what stopped that? Too many accidents, workman comp cases, and eventually my employer got tired and said, we're two open cases and dismissed me. And that was five years ago? Yes. Well, how have you been supporting yourself for the last five years? I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to ask the plaintiff. How does he support himself? He has his own home because it was his home that he was put out of. So I assume you own that home. No, ma'am. No. You rent it? Yes. How much is your rent? Let's Subsidized renting, $60 a month. Describe the house for me. Uh, it is a two-bedroom uh, townhome. Two-bedroom, two-bath? Two-bedroom, one-bath. For which you pay $60 a month? Yes, ma'am. Have you applied for 
any other type of federal assistance? I've been attempting to try to get Social Security, which has been just a dead end. Because they ask you what your disability is. Annalisa Baseman claims her ex-boyfriend, Michael Ash, is responsible for unpaid loans and returning her belongings. Okay, Mr. Ash says part of your lawsuit is for this $1,450 that you paid to your witness. There's no issue that you paid that money to the witness because he says that you paid that money to the witness and you received it from her. Yes, I did. When did you pay her the money for his two domestic violence cases? Um, it was January 11th and then the rest was paid 2021? Yes, and then the rest was paid to you in April. Now, you had moved a lot of your stuff, according to your complaint, after he stayed with you for a while, and he was successful in regaining his house. She got out of his townhome. You took an apartment for you to have together. No, ma'am. I have my own house that I pay for on a monthly basis, okay? He came and stayed with me. Well, that me. I understand for two Whip weeks. It. Then we went back to his town home where we were spending the weekends. Spending just the weekends? Just the but weekends. But he was staying there. Yes, he, he was, was staying there. You came and just spent weekends. Yes. Well, was that between January and April of 2021? Yes. And it I, continued I you... on up until June. What happened in June? June 5th was when it started to, the relationship started to fall apart. And at that point, I had what already... Gave you, what gave you a clue? The fact that Deanna Don Robinson was over there every day, even though she had a harassment order against him. Just a second. So she was at the townhome. Yes. How did you find that out? Uh, he told me one night when we hadn't done very much talking, he said Deanna and I were up drinking till 3 o'clock in the morning. Even when you were home in your house? Yes. So that gave you your first clue? Yes. Okay. What had you brought over to his townhome? I had brought over makeup, clothing, um, movies. Um, he lives about 20 minutes from me. He lives in a different city. So I brought over food supplies because I try to do keto, you know, everything. You understand that this is a very expensive place to run a court system. Yeah. So we're not interested in the food supplies you brought over, even your makeup that you brought over. Now, you ultimately found out that they were back together again, or at least you had a suspicion, and, and owing to the fact that they got married two days ago, I would suggest to you that your intuitions were very good. <laughs> Tell me the circumstances surrounding you paying these two bills for him. First of all, Chris would not do any more work for us until she got the $250 from before. Okay. She was his legal researcher more than Before. anything. Okay. Okay. He acknowledges that. Yeah. The only question is, were you paying this because you were a couple and you were helping him out? Or was there a contract between you that this was a loan? There that's was what, a verbal uh, just a contract. Well, that's what you're going to tell me and that's what I'm going to try to figure out. His explanation so far, whether I like it or not, is plausible that you were in a relationship with each other. There was another woman involved. You wanted him to be free from any of those stressors from this other woman and from two previous to her who also had some sort of case against him. You don't look like that kind of guy, Mr. Ash, but looks can be deceptive. <laughs> and that you as part of a couple pay this bill for him. You're gonna tell me that there was a loan with an expectation of being repaid. So let me have it. There was a loan. Well, I, that's a conclusion. Yes. I want you to tell me the circumstances surrounding you paying Chris. I paid Chris because he was in such a state of worrying and mental anguish over the different people who were who had harassment orders against him. He didn't know what to do. He was beside himself. So therefore, I paid her the $250 with the acknowledgement that after Not acknowledgement. So you were concerned about him. You paid the $250. I'm still waiting. Well, the thing is, if anything, why would I pay her the $1,200 after she was done with the cases? I have to ask you this question. You paid her the 250. Yes. He never paid you a penny towards the 250. You are correct. Right. And so after he never paid you a penny from the 250, because he's somebody that lives in a townhouse for which he pays $60 a month, who doesn't work, who was going to get a job through his friend, making yeah, $35 yeah. As as, an hour. Right, he hadn't worked in five years. So based on history, both his history of not working for five years and your history with him together, for the months that you lived together, he never worked. 
I was never aware that he never worked. He had told me that he owned his own auto shop and that he was working every day. Eminem. Eminem Automotive, which is owned by he and his father. Eminem Automotive. Where is it located? It's located in Esco, Minnesota. E S K O. While she's looking for it, Mr. Ash, does your father own a mechanic shop? No. Did you? Uh, once upon a time. When? I haven't, that business not, has not been open in six years. There was an attempt to make the business come open, then COVID-19 hit and it never reopened. 19 hit, didn't, didn't hit this country until January of 2020. I was going to attempt to actually open it up, never happened. Well, where were you going to open it? On my fa that father's property where it was originally located. Okay, now I got it. When you say you were going to try to open it again, Mr. Ash, the property still exists. Yes, ma'am. The shop still exists. Yes, ma'am. It's in my father's name. It's his property. I don't care in whose name the property exists. Where are your siblings? Uh, my sibling, my sister, lives in Texas. So you're the only one who lives in this area. Yes, ma'am. Got it. Annalisa Baseman has accused her ex-boyfriend, Michael Ash, of refusing to pay back loans. She is also suing for the return of her belongings. Okay, the only other thing that you have, other than this 1450, if you can't find it. Yeah, it's a little it's, sketchy on the internet. It'll come up on Google Maps. Mm -hmm. I have an address, but no owner. No owner, but you have an address. Mm -hmm. What does it say, Sarah, as far as what it does? Uh, okay. Automotive and restorations. But it does list it as a current business? That I can't, I can't tell. tell you. There, there hasn't been anything recent posted from what I can tell. The last post I see was October 20th of 2018. What kind of post was that? On their Facebook page. There's a review on Google for it. Oh, really? And there's a phone number listed as well. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Would you stand up? Whether or not it's an official business, Your Honor, is uh, not the point. If, well, because it is a de facto business. Sit down. There's a review on... Sit. Okay. Yes, ma'am. There's a current phone number? Listed on the Facebook page as well as, I believe, the Yelp page. Really? Hmm? Interesting. Would you like it? No, I don't need it, actually. Is this total public housing where you're living? Yes. So the last time you had a job, according to you, was five years ago, working as a driver, you had a, too many accidents. Yes, ma'am. But the last time, at least, there's a current phone number for the, this mechanic's shop that belongs to your father, who's allegedly not there, I assume. He lives on the property. Mm -hmm. But that's a current phone number for the shop. No, ma'am. No. That number is disconnected. As of when? A year and a half. What happened a year and a half ago? when that number went offline. What happened a year and a half ago? That's when everything was totally gave up on. Uh -huh. What property of hers do you still have at your house? Her patio set, which is on the outside. Okay. You want that back? Yes, please. Okay, you can go pick it up within five days. Okay. What else? You mentioned the patio set. He mentioned the patio set. What else is there? There is um, a lot of DVDs I'm, I'm, that I'm I own. Not I'm, I'm, there are four special books. Her fiance gave to me that were handwritten in that he m created that Mr. Ash has because I was reading them over at his house. Also too, just a sec, Mr. Ash, do you know what four books she's talking about? Yes, ma'am. The one four that she left behind because she had wanted nothing to do with Chris and her fiance. I don't care. You know which four books she's talking about? Yes, ma'am. She's going to pick those up with the patio set. What else? Also, he has the original paperwork on my second house. Where did you leave it? It was in his truck. Have you looked in your truck? Yes, ma'am. Do you have the paperwork? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so she's gonna pick up the paperwork, the four books, and the patio furniture within five days. You can take a marshal if you believe you need it or send I will somebody. have to because he called the police on me the last time when I was over okay, there. Okay, so we'll give you an order okay. and you can take it with a police officer for a standby and pick up your property. That sounds wonderful, thank yeah. you. Yeah, he's not giving you back the 250 because I heard nothing about a loan. Now we're going to hear about the 1200, which came later. Let me hear about the 1200, which came after he didn't pay you anything for the 250. The 1200 was supposed to be a loan 
because we were moving into a new place together. And with that fact being said, I had paid off his bad debts in order to raise which bad, his... Which bad debt? I thought it was for her. No. What, no. What did you pay off of his? I paid off two different things, and I do have what? the evidence here that I'm looking them up, Your Honor. One is a check for IC Systems. I paid off $1,124.90. What is that? What is that? Sorry? It's an old debt shh, that he shh, has. Shh. What is that? It's a collection company that's being reported on my credit report. So it's probably been there for a long time. Yes, ma'am. So what's the reason that you wanted that cleared? I did not want it cleared. She insisted that I have a clean record to be moving into this new house with her. To a new house? Yes. Okay, well, that's what I thought. I thought I read something about a new place. What new place were you moving into? She was purchasing a trailer home in the far side of Duluth. So what did you have to have a clean record for? So I have good credit. For what, if she was purchasing a trailer? We were gonna purchase it together. How were you gonna purchase it together? He had no money. Because we were planning on getting married about a month after that. It's still, he still has no money. And now he's married and unemployed. And he also had to get on the lot rent, so we needed to pay off his bad debt for the lot rent, for no. him to live there. No, I'm sorry. Sorry, madam. Sometimes love makes people blind. You don't seem like you're an unintelligent woman. You're going to get back your furniture. You want to pay off this loser's bad debt? That's your problem. I understand That's your problem. Now. You had no expectation of being repaid. He didn't pay you back the 250, and he's not paying you back the 1200. And if somebody wants to look into why he's not working it, it is father's mechanic shop, they certainly should. So now you're both living in a $60 a month townhouse. The two of you together. Good, good luck no, to you. Man, man, good luck to you both. Man, Court is adjourned. We are done. I thought it was a very fair decision. Mike Ash had given me the impression that he was working for many years. She's not happy that I got back together with my first love of my life. I didn't know that he and Deanna Robinson were together for so long. She just wouldn't let good enough be and move on. Don't be so naive to other people. Heart wants what heart wants. I'm willing to move on with my life. You know, I don't know how many years I've been saying it. If you're in love or think you're in love and you give your partner money, it's a give gift. If you want to make it a loan to anybody, your brother, your sister, your child, your parent, certainly a transient boyfriend, put it in writing. It may not be sexy, but neither is this. So if you want to be foolish enough to give a boyfriend money and you want it to be a loan in case it falls apart, get a note. Agreed. Erica Fields, for payment of services and negative reports to regulatory agencies. Court come to order, all rise. Have a seat, please. Good morning, Judge. We have case number 1025, Jones versus Fields. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Fields, I'm going to start with you in this case. You were planning a wedding. Yes, ma'am. On what date was the wedding? Sunday, May 30th. Did it take place? Yes, ma'am. Is this your husband? Yes, ma'am. Are you happy? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good. <laughs> Both look very happy. Two months tomorrow. Two months. Yeah. Keep counting them that way with yes, a smile. Yes, ma'am. And you had a pretty good wedding day? Amazing. Yes, Great. When you were planning the wedding, according to what I read in the complaint and your answer, you were looking for someone to do the makeup for your wedding. Yes, ma'am. And you did a search and you found someone who came recommended, and that was the plaintiff. Yes. And on what date did you make an appointment to see her? Well, actually, before that, Your Honor, I had a phone consultation with her on Friday, April 23rd. Okay. And you made an appointment to see her? The first appointment was Sunday two days later, the 25th of April. Okay, and you went to her place of business. Was it a studio or her home? A studio. In the phone conversation that you had with her on the 23rd, did you get a quote for what her services would be in total? Yes, ma'am. So and the verbal quote was up to, uh, it was for myself on site and up to four bridesmaids. I only needed three. And how much was that? $675, and I do have a copy of that quote. I'm going to get to that yes, in a minute. And after you left the studio, where did you go? To have engagement photos done. How long did that take? The engagement photos? <laughs> Forever. Yes, about five or six hours we were being photographed at multiple locations. Okay, so it would be fair to say, Ms. Fields, you had your makeup done on a Sunday, which is not a regular work day, yeah. and you had your makeup done on that Sunday in order to take your engagement photos. Um, not that, there's no equivocation there. Okay. 
when one takes engagement photos. I've been through enough weddings of my children and grandchildren to know mm -hmm. that when you take engagement photos, you get your makeup done. I wasn't planning to. I don't wear makeup typically. Well, whether you plan to typically, it is too serendipitous that out of 365 days a year, yes, that the one day that you had your test makeup, you also had a very long photo shoot for your engagement party at multiple locations. Yes. I can't get that through my head that that was serendipitous and unplanned by you. Yes, ma'am, I did. I apologize. Right. And now I'd like to see from you, Ms. Jones, a copy of the contract. So here is the proposal and the contract. And can you give me some idea, Ms. Jones, of how long the makeup application took? It usually only takes like 45 minutes, but it was during conversation, so it was a little bit longer. It was like an hour and maybe 15 minutes. Do you remember what time Ms. Fields got there? No, I don't remember exactly what time. Her Do you remember was, what time you got there? We were supposed to be there, if I'm not mistaken, at noon. And I got there, I texted her and told her I was a few minutes late. She said it was fine. I got there, she okay. was waiting for me. Were you wearing the clothes <clears throat> you were going to wear at the engagement photos? No, ma'am. Then you had to go home to yes, get and change in order to get the engagement photos? Yes, ma'am. What? No, she had the clothes on. She left my studio and went straight to the no, no, bike. No. What was she wearing? My engagement so here photos. is the photo that she I'd had like on. It was, it. yeah. I'd like to see it. Mm -hmm. And she also made it her profile picture. Okay, just a second. Miss Fields? Yes, ma'am. This is your husband. Yes. Do you remember what color shirt you were wearing for the engagement photos? Uh, yes, ma'am. It was... Oh, sorry. Yes, ma'am. It was uh, red. It was red. Yes, ma'am. And your wife was wearing polka dot dress with red, big red rose? Yes, ma'am. So those were the engagement photo. That's mm -hmm. what you were wearing. Well, you were wearing that to the studio. No, ma'am. I left church. I came to her in a black one-piece unit, because I'm not sure what she's wearing. And that's the picture I sent her from the engagement photos. Okay. But that's this not is what not, I was wearing. This is not what she was wearing, she no. said, when she came to your that studio. Is what she was no, wearing. I have a picture. Okay. Can I see your photo, yes, please? Yes, ma'am. Unfortunately, it's in my phone because I didn't know it would be privy. But this is when I left her studio. That was in a parking lot. Okay, great. Let's just take a quick look. No rose. Oh, my goodness. Those are some lashes. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get some of those. Thank you, sir. Okay. I'm reading this initial retainer, and Sarah's viewing the contract because I'm going to look at it in a second. It says that when you left, you were supposed to give her a retainer of $300 if you signed the contract. Yes. Did you give it to her? Uh, it was verbally agreed, and I have... No, no, no. That's oh, not what fine. I asked. No, I did not. Did you give her any money? Yes. How much money did you give $30 her? $30 cash for tip. As a tip? Yes. So other than the tip, you didn't give her any money? No, ma'am. But you did sign the contract? Yes, ma'am. Did the contract provide that at the time of signing of the contract, you were supposed to give her the deposit? No, ma'am. It just says May 21st was the entire amount was due. There's no deposit date. That's correct. Okay, well, it's a little confusing. It says that the deposit must be paid in advance. Well, advance could be a day in advance or two days in advance, but there is, according to the contract, a $300 deposit that's due in advance. Yes, ma'am. That's non-refundable. Yes, ma'am. Did you pay her the $300? No, ma'am. Now tell me why not. We had a verbal agreement and later confirmed by her in writing that May 7th was when the deposit would be due. Okay. Did you ask her, because you confirmed and you signed this contract? Yes, ma'am. This is my question. She does your makeup. Yes. She shows you the contract. Yes. You say that's fine because we've already agreed upon the price. Yes, ma'am. She needs a deposit to hold the date. Yes. I want you to understand how that usually works. Yes, ma'am. If you're going to hold the date, you say, I'm going to sign the contract and give you a deposit. Same day, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. When you... You took a wedding venue. That's what usually happens when you take a wedding venue. Yes, you go, you sign the contract. On the day you sign the contract, you give them the deposit. Yes. I assume that's what you did. On um, The wedding venue was paid in full the day we visited. Okay, but it was paid well before. Yes. But usually you give someone a deposit, yes. and they hold the date because this is a service business. It's a service venue. Absolutely. It's a service makeup artist. So the 7th of May, the delay in giving her a deposit for sure had to be because you asked for it. She never gave me a date for the deposit to so I asked if I could just pay it on the 7th. Well, because you uh, seem like an intelligent woman. Yes, ma'am. The contract says 
that the deposit must be paid in advance. Yes. By the way, you should change the contract by saying the deposit must be paid at the time of signing the contract. After this, I have. Yes, ma'am. You did? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you understand that there was... A little shaky. A little was a, was a little shaky. Yes. Because certainly she wasn't doing your makeup, even yours, for a tip. I agree. So at minimum you know that you owe her the deposit, yes. at minimum. Yes. So ultimately, you breach the contract, and you breach the contract by canceling her service. She canceled. Well, I read your answer. You tell me in your words yes. what you want me to believe happened. So when we spoke over the phone and in studio, we did verbally agree that I would pay the deposit May 7th. She didn't have a definite date that she wanted it paid. But I No, let... no, no, no. You understand what I mean, Okay. Miss Fields. You're supposed to pay the deposit the day you signed the contract. She didn't issue me an invoice till May 1st. It's not an invoice. Uncross your arms. Don't get angry. So far, it looks like you're ahead of the game, right? Yeah. You should have paid the deposit okay. at the time you signed the contract. You okay. knew that it said $300 deposit. The $375 was paid on the day of the wedding. You knew that. And you knew that, sir, because you came with her, right? Yes, ma'am. Did you have any money with you? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, if you had money with you, why didn't you give her a deposit? When you signed the contract, then all you had to do was do 375 on the date of the wedding, finished. You used the makeup. You went and did your engagement pictures using her service mm -hmm. and didn't pay her anything. So at minimum, you owed her for her service. Yes, ma'am. Which is one hour, and that charge was minimally $300 because she was going to do you and up to four bridesmaids for another 375. I mean, if you think about it, because that's what the package included. Okay, so now why don't you tell me the story that you're gonna tell me about how she breached the contract. So May 3rd, I was at work and I received a phone call from Danielle. Out of the blue, uninitiated by myself, and she told me that she had other business opportunities for the same day as my wedding that were willing to pay before our agreed upon deposit due date and that she wanted me to pay her in advance of our agreement. And I told her that I didn't have it. To be honest, I got paid that Friday. And he said he had money. I didn't ask him for it. He wasn't my husband. Just a yet. second. Now you can sit down. He said he had money. Yes, ma'am. You're hollering to the top of your lungs, and I'm like, hold up, I didn't call you for all this. So I didn't. Claims Erica Fields refused to pay for services. Erica is countersuing Danielle for making false accusations. So she wanted her money before? Yes, on the 3rd. And you said to her? I will pay you on Friday based on our agreement, the 7th. And she decided to cancel because. No, not oh. she decided. What did she say to you? She said that she needed me to pay her what I was going to do. And I said, I don't, I'm at work and I can't really have this conversation right now. I said, if you feel the need to take the other business because they can pay early, go ahead and take the other business. She canceled the contract and sent me to cancel the contract. What did she say? She did say that she was going to bill me for the trial service for $80. And I received that invoice. Okay. Now, why did you call her on the 3rd? Because it had gotten to that point, and I did get a phone call from one of my facial clients that wanted to book that Sunday. So either I was going to put them on the Saturday, I was going to put them on the Sunday, but I wanted to make sure that she was paying me my money on that Friday. Okay. Because that's what you would agree to, to I, accept I the deposit on Friday. Yeah, I did. I did agree to that. Okay. She said she had just paid the venue all this money. So I did. And we had just came out of COVID. So, I mean, I have a soft heart. Okay. So you had agreed on the 7th. You called her on the 3rd. And you said, I want to make sure you're going to do this booking because I have another opportunity. I couldn't even get the sentence out before she went AWOL. I couldn't even finish the sentence. So she... Now, went when you say she went AWOL, that's a conclusion. I want you to tell me oh, what she how said. How dare you call me on the 3rd? This is 27 days before my wedding asking me for money, is what she said. And what and did I, you say? I couldn't say nothing because she kept going and I just became quiet because you're hollering to the top of your lungs. And I'm like, hold up, I didn't call you for all this. So I just became quiet. I let her vent. She went and vented for about 10 minutes about other vendors and other things that were going on that had nothing to do with me. And at She that, was a stressed bridezilla. Exactly. That's what you are describing. Exactly. And I just let her vent, because sometimes you just need to get it out. So I let her vent, didn't say nothing. And at that point, I was sitting here in my mind, I'm like, this lady probably is not going to pay me my money. And in the conversation, she said, just cancel my contract. Just cancel it. I'll find somebody else. Just cancel it. I said, is that, if that's what you want, I will surely do that. Yes. I said, okay, well, I will still be billing you for the services that I did do, which is the $80. I did say that. And she said, okay, fine, and hung up in my face. Okay. Did you bill her for the I 80 I did. Did she pay you? Nope. 
She looked no. at all the invoices. Okay, just a second. Now, Ms. Fields, we're yes. going to come back to you. Yes, ma'am. I was at work. Just a second. I don't give a rat's behind where you were and how stressed you were. Mm -hmm. I actually believe her. I didn't go off on Just her. a second. I actually believe her. Okay. Yeah, you know why I believe her? Yes, ma'am. It all sounds very reasonable. I mean, I'm visualizing this. You signed a contract you didn't pay. He had the money, mm -hmm. and he was with you mm -hmm. in his red shirt and jacket, but he didn't pay the deposit. You agreed, which is perfectly fine, mm -hmm. that you would pay her on the 7th. Yes, ma'am. So you saw her on April 25th, and you said, I will pay you on May 7th. Yes, ma'am. Or before. I mean, yes. you certainly could pay her before. You didn't. She gets a call from another one of her clients that says, I'd like to book you on the same day as the wedding, which was May 30th. And whatever the conversation was, she said to you, okay, we're probably not a good fit. Mm -hmm. She was prepared to cancel the contract, which you would sign. Yes. She said, just pay me my $80 for the makeup, mm -hmm. which is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Yes, ma'am. $80. You said fine and hung up. You didn't send her the $80. No. You did, in fact, report her to the Better Business Bureau. And others. Why? Because she continued to call me at work. To ask for her $80. Um, it goes deeper than that, Your Honor. Well, how much deeper? This is a lady you never met. Exactly. This is a lady you never met. So how could it go deeper? It's not as if you shared a boyfriend, you shared an ex-somebody. We share an acquaintance that I didn't know that we shared. What difference does that make? The acquaintance has been kind of sort of after me, um, and I have now taken matters up with that acquaintance, and this is some, the person that's whose makeup she did on the 30th. Okay, so she told the story that you had a service, you didn't pay for it. Yes, ma'am. Because she sent you an invoice, and what you should have done was pay the invoice. Okay. Okay? And you got the invoice, there's no question about that, and yes, you ignored it. Okay. And what I care about is why you didn't pay the $80. Why should she work for you for nothing? You take the benefit of her expertise and use it to take all of your engagement photos, yes, which was pre-planned, and then not use her as per the contract. I don't understand why you think you don't owe her at least what you agreed to, which was the 80 bucks. I never agreed to the $80. That's not true. Well, well did you think she was going to do your makeup for free? I did not, Your Honor. And just I, to, I, I agree something. with you. If she hadn't agreed to the $80, you would have been stuck with the contract. Yes, ma'am. I understand. Which now. is a lot more. I understand now. Do you? I do now. I, I mean, when you explain it, yes, ma'am, I do. I apologize. I do. Okay. Because her lawsuit now mm -hmm. is much more than just the $80. Yes, ma'am. Because she says that you maliciously filed reports to the regulatory institutions that regulate her business. Yes. Now I would like to see, please, the report that she filed and what okay. happened. Okay. Because there are two parts one for the BBB. Story. That's this one. It's her response at the bottom and mine at the top. And it's still open because we're here. And then the second one is with TDLR, which is Texas Department of License and Registration, which is where I host my esthetician license under. Can I see those? But she opened an investigation with that. Thank you. Well, I'm reading your complaint. Yes, ma'am. And your complaint is a little disingenuous because what you say here is she canceled the contract and she sent me a bill for an $80 trial run. Yes. She chose to dishonor her signed contract and cancel which I don't think happened at all. I think that she agreed to cancel the contract. Otherwise, you would be responsible for the whole contract. You would be responsible. There's no question. You have a signed deal. I didn't ask her to cancel, Your Honor. No, 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 no. I know what the conversation was. I actually do know, like I could hear it, like there was stress. And if you had said to her, I'm absolutely going to pay you on the 7th. That's three more days. I did. Four more days. No way. She asked me to pay her no. that day. She said she needed me to pay her that day because the other person was willing to pay that day. And I told her I couldn't until the 7th. And she said, then I'm going to have to cancel your contract because I'm asking you to pay Is her. Is that what happened? Absolutely not. It's a facial client. I could have easily moved them to a Saturday. Your old wedding. That's an all-day service. Yeah. Your didn't happen that way. Not. The makeup Ms. Fields, did was didn't for happen a that way. bridal shower for my, my, the yeah. girl we know together. Yeah. It was okay. not for a facial. This was, this was an unnecessary overkill. Is accusing Erica Fields of refusing to pay for services and reporting her to regulatory agencies. This was an unnecessary, I'm an unhappy lady, and I'm going to take my aggressions out on somebody who's trying to make a living. This 
was unnecessary. What kind of work do you do? I'm an accountant and a business analyst. And she continued to call me, which is the same date that I filed that, because she kept calling me. She wanted her $80. I well, at first she wanted her $80. She sent you a bill for $80. Mm-hmm. You didn't pay the bill for $80. Instead, you called the Better Business Bureau. Mm-hmm. I don't understand what you were thinking. I was, was, it I does, was upset. Doesn't sound like you're losing, right? Oh, no. I was upset, upset honestly. I don't care if you were upset or not. You should have sent her the $80. She worked on you for nothing. She made you look gorgeous for your engagement pictures, which you loved, for nothing. So at least send her the $80 when she sent a bill. If you would answered her bill immediately by sending the 80 bucks, she wouldn't have kept calling you. I understand. You just decided to ignore her. Well, she got really unprofessional. No, 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 no. Not when she sent you the bill for $80. If you had immediately sent her the $80, mm-hmm. she would not have called you again and again for her money. Yes, ma'am. How'd you expect her to contact you? For the money. In writing. I asked her to contact me in writing. Why should she contact because you in writing? And then, she, the then the, she's going to charge? Because of things that are she's saying that I verbally said are not true. So that's what why I asked for What difference did it make? For $80, it would have been over. Aren't you understanding that? You should learn that in your married life with him. Don't sweat the small stuff. For $80, which was a fair amount of money to cancel a deal, because after all, once you sign that contract, Ms. Fields, you are obligated to pay her $675, okay. whether you use her or don't use her. Okay. That's your obligation. She says, you know what? I don't want to deal with this person. <laughs> Just pay me for the day that you came in that I spent with you, which is a reasonable amount of money. Very. $80 to do your makeup for an hour. She took a lot of time. It wasn't just that she was going to do your makeup one and done. Mm-hmm. She was trying to impress you that she could do a beautiful job so you Agreed. would retain her I agree. for the whole wedding. I mean, you know, it's very, very easy. So this first thing that I'm reading was overkill. Mm-hmm. Now I'm looking at the next one. This complaint... Complaint Intake Monitoring System, CIMS. That's what they left at my door when they finished their investigation. Just a second. Well, they finished the investigation. It was received on May 18th. And May 18th was two weeks before your wedding. Mm -hmm. So two weeks before your wedding, you must have been more stressed than you were. She continued to call and text me. Why didn't you just send her the money? It became a matter of principle with you. It did, honestly. Yeah. Well, you had nothing else to do. You couldn't win against anybody else. Why did you even, in the midst of planning your first wedding, how old are you? 41. 41, in the middle of planning your first wedding, you're trying to put this woman out of business whose makeup you loved. Well, I'm, I got... Whose makeup you loved. It's not that she did a terrible job. She got you involved at you, work. I got in trouble at work for things that she did. It doesn't matter to me. The problem, as Shakespeare said, lies with you. You look to get out of paying for a service. And I don't think you looked to get out of paying for the service because of the money. No, it wasn't. I think it was because you were really stressed with everything else. Agreed. And you took it out on her. And I think that that's unreasonable. I do. I think that that's very unreasonable. And minimally, since you both agreed to modify the contract to $80, that's minimally what the plaintiff would get. She's suing for a lot more than that. And she's suing for reporting her to the Better Business Bureau, which is going to give her a negative rating, to the place that licenses her, which is now on file, all because you were in a snit over the fact that you were stressed over planning a wedding. Do you understand, sir? Yes, ma'am. It's like if you left your spoon out without rinsing it off, in your house, and instead of saying, listen, I'm not your maid, clean up after yourself, which sounds familiar to me, has been said it a couple of times myself. She packs your bags and says goodbye. That would be an overkill, right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> this was overkill. <laughs> Plaintiff is suing in the amount of $5,000, which I think is a bit of an overkill myself. Are you still working? Currently, yes. Okay, great. So she owes you $80 for the makeup, and she owes you $2,000 for making trouble for you that she had no right to do. Okay. And that was malicious. That's the judgment of the court. $2,080. Judgment for the plaintiff. You count the claims dismissed. We're done. Thank you. Court adjourned. I'm in two people want to modify a contract. It usually has to be done in the same form as the original contract was. So in this case, it was in writing. So usually any modification would also need to be in writing. That's true. So why'd you let them off the hook? Well, it seemed to me that the plaintiff was being very reasonable. And she said, all right, maybe this is not going to work. Just pay me for the hour that we spend together. And that would be by quantum merit. Pay for just the work that was done and not for anything in the future, which seemed totally reasonable. And I actually believe that the defendant said, okay, and hung up. The woman sent her a bill right away. 
she didn't pay it and had no intention of paying it. The woman agreed to say, we're done. Just pay me the 80 bucks that I usually charge somebody for a day's work. I thought that that was unconscionable. I still think it's unconscionable. So that's why we massaged the rule. Sometimes you get to do that. For justice. For justice. That's absolutely right. Dawn Gilbert is suing her son, Nathan Gilbert, and his wife, Hannah Gilbert, for unpaid loans, car insurance, and filing a false restraining order. All rise, court come to order. Have a seat, please. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Case number 1053, Gilbert versus Gilbert. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Gilbert, this is your son. Correct. And the young lady with him is his wife. Correct. This is your claim. There was a time that there was some domestic difficulty in your son's home. At that time, he came to live with you. You claimed that during that time, you made a loan to him for an attorney. Correct. And also extended another loan for him for a car. Correct. Your son and his wife ultimately reconciled, and you claim he stopped paying on the initial loan for an attorney and the car altogether. Correct. You also claim that at some point, your daughter-in-law filed a restraining order against you. Correct a restraining order that the allegations were false and she didn't show up at the hearing and that was dismissed. Correct. Okay. So I'm going to start with you, Mr. Gilbert. When were you and your wife married? We got married um, November 4th of 2019. And you have children together? Yes, ma'am. Two? Yep. How old are they? My oldest son is four, a uh, little girl that just turned one. So I gather that you and your wife were in a relationship well before you married. If you have a four-year-old, how long have you been living together? Uh, we've been living together for about six years now. Have you been living together independently on your own in your own home? Yes. In what month and year did you and your wife separate? Um, as far as after we were married, we separated January of 2021. When you and your wife separated, where did you go? I went to stay with my mother for a brief period until I was able to find something in town. Give me the date that you went to live with your mother. It would have been the first week of February. How long did you stay there? I was there probably about four days. Four days? Yes, ma'am. While you were with your mother, and I assume that the separation with your wife was not an amicable one. Correct. You had two children. Were you seeing your children? When I first separated, yes. There after about two months, no. Why? There was a restraining order that was put against me from my wife. So for the first two months, everything was okay, and you saw your children? Yep. Not, yep, yep, is not an answer. Yes, is yes. an answer. And what did your wife allege in the restraining order? That I was stalking her. Were you? No. Did she withdraw the restraining order? Yes. How much after she filed it? I had to actually get a lawyer in order to get the restraining order removed. Went to a hearing? Yes. And was the restraining order denied? Yes. So the lawyer was helpful? Yes. Did your mother give you money for the lawyer? Yes. Now, at that time you were living on your own? Correct. So you had to have gone to your mother and let her know that you had this restraining order in place? Yes. Do you remember on what date you were served with the restraining order? Uh, the second week of February. I'm confused. You said you separated and you went to live with your mother mm -hmm. around the first week in February. Yep. Yep is not an answer. And I asked you about visitation after you separated, and you said the first two months were okay. That would be February and March. Correct. But you just said you were served with the restraining order the second week in February. Correct. Well, did the restraining order stop visitation? No. Okay. So the restraining order, you continued to see the children? Yes. Until what date? Would have been end of February. Well, that's just a couple of weeks. Yes. So you were mistaken. Yes. Did you have a hearing at the end of February? No. Well, you're going to have to explain that to me, Mr. Gilbert. If she filed the restraining order the second week in February, is that when you filed it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, and usually when you file a restraining order, you appear before a judge. Did you appear before a judge? Yes, ma'am. And did you ask that your husband stay away from you? Yes, ma'am. And the children? No, ma'am. Not the children? Not the children. So when the restraining order was first issued, it was just staying away from you? Yes, ma'am. When did you change that and request that he stay away from the children? I did not request that he stay away from the children um, because we have children together. It's not my, our children's just, fault. Just a second. Well, your husband says that it became difficult for him to see his children, and I want to know when that was because I have to figure this lawyer business out. When and under what circumstances did it become difficult for him to see his children? It was the month of March. Um, he and I were having some disagreements and arguments that was really frustrating me. I was obviously a single mom at that point in time, and I just needed some time away from him and get, get the kids together so that way the kids can not see mom so upset. So I 
stop letting them see him because it was upsetting me with how much my son was asking about his dad and how much he missed his, his dad. And so eventually we just kind of came to an agreement on things. Well, you didn't come to an agreement on things. Mr. Gilbert, did you agree not to see the children? No. So you must have asked for a modification of the restraining order. It was dropped. Well, was it dropped in March? Uh, it was dropped the completely by the end of February, I believe, totally. Well, I want to know why it is he wasn't seeing his children. Did you agree not to see your children? No. I was trying to, the way I was seeing his children was through her mother. And after a period of time, um, her mother was not answering any questions as far as when I would be able to see them, when I could pick them up, so on and so forth. So that's when you decided to retain an attorney? Yes. In March? Yes. Now I'm getting the picture. So the two of you weren't talking. You were talking through an intermediary. The intermediary was her mother. Correct. Her mother stopped responding to your calls to see the children, which is when you retained, the retained attorney. an attorney. So that's when you went to your mother mm -hmm. because you didn't have money. Right. And I'd like you to tell me what the conversation was with your mother. I went to my mother. I explained to her as far as a retainer fee was required for No, tell me what you said to her and what she said to you. I went to my mom's house and I told her Tell me what you told her. I told her that I haven't been able to see the babies. I need to get a lawyer to get something going so I can see my children. And what did she say to you? She said that she could help me out, but she didn't have the full 1500 In which case, I You had... told her it was $1,500. The retainer was $1,500. Yep. How much did she say she had? She did not have all of it. Um, she could come up with about 1100 in which case the rest came out of my pocket. Okay, so she handed you $1,100. Um, I gave her the cash, and then we went down to the lawyer my next day off to get the ball rolling. You mean you gave your mother $400? Correct. And she wrote a check to the lawyer? Uh, cr uh, debit card, yes. Mrs. Gilbert? Yes. Is it correct that he put in 400, you put in 1100? Yes, it was actually 458 to be exact. And I just paid it on my debit card, the total 1500. Okay, but he gave you 458. Correct. I'm sorry, it was 468, I'm sorry. Okay, so. Let's finish off this attorney piece before we get to the car piece. Dawn Gilberts claims her son, Nathan Gilberts, and his wife, Hannah Gilberts, owes her for unpaid loans and car insurance. Now, the attorney appeared with you in court? We never went to court. I had ended up canceling the whole divorce thing due to the fact that me and the wife had come to terms. Everything was okay. And that was in March or April? It was in March, yes. Ms. Gilbert, did the attorney return any part of the retainer to you? Yes, she did. How much did um, she return? It was three seventy-two fifty. Six sixty-one. Six sixty-one. Yeah. Minus his portion. Yeah. Okay. Did your mother discuss the return of the six hundred and sixty-one dollars to her? Mm -hmm. Did you ever give her any money towards the eleven $1 hundred dollars? I was waiting to give her money after the attorney had contacted me as far as what was returned to her. In which case, I had made weekly payments thereafter. You made weekly payments. Yes. To your mother. Yes. The okay. The first one was two hundred. And then there were $100 increments over the next three weeks. So you returned $200 to her? The first week, yes. And then? $100 a week, weekly. For, for how many weeks? Three weeks. So you still owe her $161. Is that where we're at? Yes. OK. Mrs. Gilbert, did your son return to you $200 the first week, acknowledging the loan? No, ma'am. He did not? No, ma'am. I never received a $200 payment. How much did you receive in payments from him? Um, I received a total of $300. One on the May 15th, May 29th, and May 8th of $100 each. Do you have, Mr. Gilbert, any proof that you gave your mother a $200 payment towards the attorney's fees? No, I don't have the proof for the 200 I do have the proof for the uh, 200 thereafter. For 300 she said you made two, 300. Yes, I okay. cleaned out the truck and Okay, uh, okay. So we have 361. Now let's talk about the car. When you and your wife separated, did you need a car? Um, I received this car in 20 of 18. Okay. Explain to me the circumstances surrounding the as car. As far as the circumstances, right. um, there was an issue with my sister's vehicle that her my sister's vehicle no longer ran. My mother approached me as to if I wanted the vehicle or if I was just going to keep the vehicle that I had already bought from her boyfriend. Okay. And my sister was going to get the new vehicle. Okay. So this was a sort of an interfamily swap. And what arrangement did you make with regard to the car? Did you I, get a new car? Yes. I told my mother that I just paid off a tool bill. Um, that I was able to give her 50 bucks a week, and I felt that that would be the best option as opposed to my sister not working at all, not being able to guarantee my mother any money whatsoever. Okay, so you wanted a new car? Yes. You wanted a new car. What kind of car did you get? It was a 2011 Ford Edge. 
Do you remember what you paid for it? Um, the total price was $4,200. Okay. Do you have the bill of sale? No, I do not. Do you? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see it, please. Thank you. Right now, you got a newer car for 4509, and that's in 2018. Correct. Sarah, take a look and see if you can find a 2011 Ford Edge. It what? ranges from 4,200 to about 5,300. Today? Yes. In today's years. So that's probably right on. Okay. And how much of this 4509 did you pay back? I paid back a total of 3250. Is that correct? No, ma'am. You have receipts for these payments? I have the last two receipts of when they were paid off. That is all. At the time, me and my mother were on good terms. I just handed her cash on Saturdays that my wife would actually take the children up to see my mother on Saturdays. That's Every what, Saturday. what we did. I was working, so I wanted to make sure my mother was still seeing the grandchildren. You mean this is when you and your wife were together? Yes. Okay. How much is it, Mrs. Gilbert, that you allege that your son paid on the car? He paid $1,090 total. And he says he paid $3,250 on the car. That is incorrect. I told him, um, approximately three weeks ago that he still owed 3420 and he did agree to that via text. Um, I'd like to see that. Are you counting in the money that you paid, Mr. Gilbert, because you were paying for not only the car, but the insurance? Uh, as far as the insurance, the insurance was something that was never agreed upon. She told me that she was going to have her name on the registration. That way, she was able to insure the vehicle. Just a second. Mr. Gilbert, so I asked you a simple question. What you didn't give me was a simple answer. Does the thirty-two fifty that you claim that you paid your mother, did you pay a separate insurance policy on the car that you and your wife were driving? No. So I am correct that this 3250 encompasses both insurance and the car payment. No, it was just the car payment. Well, who paid for the insurance? My mother, ma'am. Ah, that's ridiculous, Mr. Gilbert. That's what Why I tried to you... explain to her. What do you mean you tried to explain that to her? I tried to, to explain her? to my mother that I did not need her to carry the insurance, that I had other vehicles, and it would have been cheaper for me to insure it with my other vehicles. But she insisted on having the insurance and... Just a second. Is the car in your name? It's in both of our names, my mother and I. Well, maybe it was to ensure that there was current insurance. What other vehicles do you have? I currently have a 1998 BMW, and my wife has a 2013 Toyota Corolla. You pay insurance on those cars? With Correct. what company? Through, uh... Um, uh Nationwide. Uh, okay, the no. total, after dropping the BMW, because that no longer runs, we pay 360 Just a second. So you currently only have a 2013 car and this car? Yes. That was purchased in 2018? Correct. And now... On the one car that you have, you pay 300 and how much? How much did he say he paid on the one car that he has insured? It's 300 and something. It was Wait. for the Toyota and the BMW. Just as, no, you said you dropped the BMW. What you said was, we dropped the BMW because it's no longer running. Is that hey, what he said? That's what he said. And he, he said, said he so the insurance is now 363. Yes, because there is a loan on the vehicle and it has to have full coverage. It's my vehicle, ma'am. I, I uh, carry high because I'm considered a liable driver being young for the loan. So my insurance is very expensive. So why would it have been cheap? With the, Mr. Gil with the multi car discount. Oh, you're ridiculous. Dawn Gilbert is accusing her son, Nathan Gilbert, and his wife, Hannah Gilbert, of refusing to pay for a car loan and the insurance payments. So now pretty steep breakdown of a relationship between a mother and a son very quickly over a four-week period. Mr. Gilbert, how do you think that happened? Due to the fact of me getting back with my wife. <clears throat> my mother does not care for my wife. Um, after I told her that I was moving back home, she told me that her house was no longer a storage facility and I needed to come pick up my stuff, otherwise it would be sitting outside. So that should be a good lesson for your mother and for everybody else out there that, you know, until things sort of calm down with somebody else's relationship or marriage, it's a very good idea to keep your nose out of it. The problem with you and your mother is you had a close relationship with your mother. Yes. And I'm certain that at the time that you and your wife separated, you 
unburdened yourself to your mother. Yes. And when you unburdened yourself to your mother, without getting into the specifics of it, you said some very ugly things about your wife. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh yes. is not an answer. Yes. And at the time that you said those very ugly things about your wife, you wanted your mother to believe you. Yes. Because at the time you said those very ugly things about your wife, you believed them. Yes. See what happens? See, your mother doesn't have all the same elements that you do. She loves you. She clearly loves her grandson. All she knows is you told her some very angry and ugly things about your wife with whom you are now together. Yes. You can't do anything about that, Miss Gilbert. That's it. Right. That's it. I understand that. Y you got it. Can't do anything about that. It's his choice. But if you're a smart lady. Thank you. If you're a smart lady. Thank you. And if your son is smart, he'll recognize he has one mother. But the divorce rate in this country is better than 50-50, so chances are that you got a 50% shot. Right. You only have one mother. Mm -hmm. And it was a mother who was actually pretty good to you. For the most part, yes. Who clearly adores her grandson, who I don't know if she sees anymore. No, ma'am. All I'm telling you both is that that's being unfair to him. I understand. You know, controlling children, which is clearly something that happened at least for a short time with your husband, you control the children because it was clear that if he couldn't see the children with you and your mother made it difficult to see his children, so that means you're using the children as a control, which is really not supposed to happen if you're a loving parent. I control their influences. What is supposed to happen is if you're a loving parent, you want the widest possible community of a village who love them to be part of them so that they can feel as if they have a safety net, that they grow up with as many safety nets of love in their life as possible. So if you and your husband are off for an evening in a casino and your car gets blindsided and T-boned and both of you are gone, that there's a safety net for them. You don't want to take that away. It's unfair in any event. I don't want to hear about this protective order, actually, Mrs. Gilbert. You survived it. Did you hire a lawyer for the protective order? No, ma'am. I just oh, looked okay. down and um, All right. So he owes you thirty-two fifty, which he actually sort of acknowledges for the car, and three sixty-one for the lawyer, which is thirty-six eleven. Mr. Gilbert, Mrs. Gilbert, marriages go through rocks up and down and up and down. You have a child. Your child loves you. Clearly, your child had a relationship with his grandmother. Yes. You sh really should find a way of making sure that that relationship continues. And you try to put a period, just as you put a period with the anger that you felt towards your wife. Yes. Right? Right. You put a period. Yes. I would try to do the same with my mother. Judge, for the plaintiff, we're finished. Thank you. Court is adjourned. Uh, it was fair as far as the amount that was owed. I did not want to pay her what she was asking for. I'm glad that it's over with, and I hope everything gets taken care of. I find it to be petty. I tried to get this settled out of court. She refused to work any kind of deal out, and here we are. Being told I was being petty for wanting to be paid back. I have no idea. The fact that me getting back with my wife, we got together when we were dating, and it seem to tinker downhill. I hope our relationship can be put back together. I really do. Uh, if she can be cordial about it and not throw rocks, show up at my work threatening me. I just went and asked him if we could talk like adults. Then there's a possibility, yes. I'm glad it's over. As someone who was fortunate enough to grow up with many safety nets, I think that was a great lesson in there to the, both the defendants, that taking away a child's safety net because of some sort of ill will or harbored resentment against a parent is just unfortunate, legal issue or not. So I thought that was a great lesson. I always feel sorry for grandparents who love their children and then get themselves involved with a breakup, which happens frequently, take sides right away before the situation has sort of calmed itself down and you see in what direction it's going. Maybe he'll listen. You know, I didn't know, but I'm sure he said a lot of nasty things about his wife when he went to live with his mother. She saw how hurt he was. She developed her own resentments. That spilled over. But, you know, you've got to love your children. More than you hate each other. Right. <laughs>